Hi, I'm Russ with Spoolheads Racing. I'm building a 164 scale die cast racing track that's all gravity based. Today I'm going to be showing off version 3 of the 180 degree open track turn that I'm working on. I've made some changes to the turn that I'm excited to show you. A couple things I want to talk about before I get started. First, I got my first fan mail. We got this one from one of my nephews. Sweet car. And this one right here. Huh? I'm going to put it up somewhere. They also sent me two cars. They sent me a Tesla Roadster from Matchbox. It's a really good looking cast. And they sent me this. This is a porta potty truck. It's called Poop King. I have not seen this before. I don't know how they found it, but it's got a couple porta potties in the back. I just love it. Absolutely love it. And who doesn't like to say Poop King? Thank you so much for that fan mail. It's awesome to receive. Thank you. Another thing I want to talk about is that I've designed some SR1 ramps that I'm going to post on Thingiverse. These are pretty cool looking. I really like the variety that it gives to the track. There's some good options in connecting them together in different ways with the SR1 track and, and with Hot Wheels track and crash racers as well. Go check those out. They'll be up on Thingiverse. Now it's time to talk about the 180 degree open track turn. If you're not up to date with what's happened so far, feel free to go back and watch the version 2 video. Talk about kind of what I liked about version 1 to compared to version 2. But there are some changes that had to be made. So let me show you what version 3 looks like. This is version 3 right here. It's still a work in progress. I'm designing 3D printed clamps for or supports for these areas right here. So please forgive the binder clips. But it holds it together all right for right now. Version 3 is printed really thin. It's still really strong and flexible, so it's not just going to crack. But it's printed really thin in order to try and keep the cost down and the print time down. But version 3 right now is designed to be able to have some good flexibility, a lot more like the Crash Racer's turn. Here it is in Fusion 360. Here's a couple of features that have changed since the version 2 and 1 versions. First off, the entrance to the turn is still not as long as version 1, but a little bit longer than version 2. Version 2 was too short of an entrance and some cars just ramped up and hit the top. Another key element about it is that I raised the entrance point higher. As the cars enter into the turn from the inside of the turn, they drop into the turn. This should help cars start the turn without ramping straight up to the top and hitting. I'm really excited to see how this works. Another key point of version 3 is that I added ridges back in. These ridges aren't just consistent all the way through. These ridges are very intentional in order to help cars guide through the turn and not have ridges where they don't, where they don't need to be. The goal is to keep the cars that are taking the, the bank high to stay high and not drop down like version 2 which had no ridges. One of the changes that I'm most excited about with version 3 is that the bank of the turn starts here and continues typically to right there where then the exit starts and it starts to level out. That's how it works with crash racers. That's how it worked with version 1 and version 2. But what I've done with version 3 is I started the, the bank slope here and it's consistent all the way until the cars are going straight again. One of the problems that we've had with cars coming out of the crash racers and the version one and version two turns is that the front end doesn't straighten out enough. And so then the back end starts to slide down, causing the cars to come out of the turn at a diagonal. This happens all the time on tracks that are out there. And I really think that this is gonna work out to uh, straighten the cars out and have very few cars going diagonal and coming out. All right, with that said, I'm gonna install this into the track and give it a go. Let's see how it goes. Now that I've got the turn installed, I really wish I would have taken the time to design and 3D print the supports because that is not looking very cool looking. So it's gonna look better, I'll get there, but it's a good proof of concept right here to see if this design's working and what changes I wanna make. So let's get racing. So on these races again, I'm gonna show the race in real time and then in slow motion. And on this race right here, you can see that Jaguar is hits that top rail, so it's not making the turn like I'm hoping. I think that's probably going to get resolved when I get the supports printed, so I'm not too concerned with that. I'm not noticing anyone coming out at an angle right now, so that's great. Looks like the out is working, except for they are sliding down towards the inside rail. So um, maybe I need to make the grooves thicker. Looks like they all um, kind of start high and then come low and then go up high again. So um, maybe the rails aren't quite high enough. Maybe that's a good run for that Dotson. Was that a pass right there? That Bentley does a great job to overtake that Lamborghini on the turn and get in there.
great run by that escort. Does slide in a little bit um, coming out of that turn. Not too bad though. Got a bunch of not fast cars coming in. It's pretty great to see cars be able to make it all the way through. Ooh, those two hit hard. Those had pretty good speed. These last two cars on a crash racer's turn, they don't make it through that turn. So that's good to see that they make it through. Oh my goodness, look at this. This is amazing. So there's an accident. <laughs> Somehow that um, blue truck flipped early on and comes into the turn flipped. And the two cars push the push it all the way through the turn and make it down. <laughs> That's a real tribute to the design of uh, being able to finish the turn. The whole goal with this is don't have dumb accidents. Don't ruin a race just because one car is going slow through a turn. If they're going to ruin a race, make it be epic. All, right, all of those are doing the same thing. They're going up and then down, then up again, and then sliding towards the inside. So. Definitely, I think uh, I want to make the rails bigger. Look at that Tahoe. That Tahoe slides up. Let's see what this next Corvette does. Same motion, but actually after he hits, he goes the other way. So that's a good balance. So. Here's some more races, a tighter view to be able to show a little bit more in detail what's going on. Again, we got a slide at the bottom. Oh, here's another one where the cars are going to push. Who flips? Who flips? Oh, it's a, it's a Toyota truck. It's already flipped. <laughs> and everyone shoves them down the track to try and get by. Oh, and they pass. Oh my goodness, that's so great. It's so great to see. Okay, we got a, we got a great pass here. Uh, I think it's a Nissan Leaf coming in on the outside and is able to overtake that Aston Martin. You get high on that turn if you got the good position, then really gives you a boost out of that turn, which is great to see. A lot of contact here. Everyone's sliding down towards that edge, but everyone's really maintaining a straight line for the most part coming out of that turn. So I'm gonna count that as a big success. So that, that series right there is great to see. Um, each car, each of these cars slides a little bit to the back, uh, ends up making contact with that rail and straightens out a lot earlier than, um, than it has on the previous turns. All right, here's some key takeaways. The exit is definitely different from the previous versions, but is it better? I venture to say yes. I think I really like the cars coming out of there. I don't know if I can fix everyone going straight out of there unless I kind of bank the inside, which maybe is worth trying, but right now I'm gonna stick with this design on the exit. Don't judge the entrance. I'm not gonna judge the entrance until the supports are done. But next time I reprint this, I'm definitely gonna make the rails bigger. Takeaway three is that binder clips are ugly. Thanks everyone for joining me. Please feel free to leave your comments and race on friends.